Hey guys, let's, uh, let's make a painting. First I'm gonna start putting water on the glass so we can stick it, it doesn't go anywhere. And put some more water on the top. Now let's see what we're gonna do today. Mm, I'm thinking more on the simple side just because there's so much pressure in, 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 I don't know about your life, but in my life, it, my goodness. And uh, the last thing I want is more pressure on my painting. Anyway, blue paint right in the middle, kind of formed the horizon line and just gonna spread up. Now, originally I was thinking to make a forest here, but it's turned out to be clouds. You see here, I still struggle to think of as a forest, but here I fully decide to be clouds. I'm gonna leave some a white spots for the fluffy clouds. For the mid-ground, I'm just gonna use some of the paint above, um, pretty much just water and spread it around. Now I'm gonna use red brownish. I'm just gonna put two dots and spread them around left and right. Now I'm not gonna go like on the sky all over the place. I'm just gonna move left and right. Kind of simulate, and, and I'm not gonna go on the, in the mid ground. And I will let it blend by itself. So I want something like a calm water in the mid ground and a land on the a, on a foreground. I'm going to try to remove the two dots. Uh, they look like rocks, but I don't think I need rocks here. Mm, for the sky, I, I think I'm going to take some of the paint from... Yeah, I will remove, you know what, I will remove the rocks. I'm going to take the rocks and use them to match the sky with, uh, with that color. Okay, just matching that so we can have more uh, color balance uh, painting. And I'm going to start removing some of the paint. Now, uh, before that, I'm going to uh, take the, the black gouache. And uh, the reason for that is I need to prepare the, uh, the horizon. So I'm going to make a couple of spots in the horizon. I'm, I'm not going to make a full horizon. I will leave it some kind of misty weather. Um, but I'm going to make a couple of spots. And the reason for that is that's going to be my, um, my foundation for uh, growing up some plants. So I'm just gonna put a lot of gouache there so I make sure it stay moist and uh, it's enough uh, a black gouache uh, so I can grow up some plants. I think that's enough. Maybe a little bit more on the left side. There we go. And later I will, I will do it with a palette knife. But before that, I need to start uh, removing some of the... You see, I was thinking to, to do it now, but I forget it. I need to remove some of the paint. So I'm gonna take a nice clean brush and remove, make some fluffy clouds. Just remove some of the paint. Um, I'm using a flat brush. I found out that's the most easiest one to control when it's come down to removing paint. And clean my brush every time I remove some paint so I don't have... Well, it always depends what I want to do. If I want a more uh, high contrast uh, light spot for the fluffy clouds, uh, I will just clean my brush all the time. If I want more like a blend-ish, uh, I will just wet the brush and uh, keep using it, not to, don't, I don't have to clean it all the time, so I can have the kind of some paint left over on the on the brush, and I keep going on the mid ground, 
just removing some of the paint uh, so I can make a connection. Now I know the, the colors um, for the foreground and uh, the reflection on the fluffy clouds on the sky uh, from the sun matching, but it's a good idea to actually physically connect them uh, and simply by removing the paint. It's like uh, the whole reflection is going from the sky and uh, go in mid ground and go in the foreground. Nothing in particular. Uh, I was wondering, do I want to put some details in this painting? And I don't know. I, lately, I do a lot of not very uh, detail, not very subjective. Uh, There we go. Remove some of the paint. Now the brown, red-ish color, kind of harder to remove, but uh, I'm just going to clean my brush all the time and that will give me a fresh, clean water to remove some of the paint. And of course the foreground is going to have uh, bigger strokes. Let's clean it up. Now if I had to put a detail here, I would probably put like a boat. That's what I was thinking, because I, I like ocean, I like all that, the freedom that the water gives you. But uh, this one, like I said, is just going to be free for all. Yeah, I think that's a nice connection. Now, maybe a little bit there. I really want to help it blend a little bit. Anyway, so uh, I'm going to take my palette knife and uh, just just push it up, pretty much scrubbing the, the paint out of the paper. Just scrub out of it. Um, and you know, very hard strokes. Uh, I'm not sure on the video you can see, but in some places I pretty much destroy the paper. Uh, I want that effect when the palette knife pushing the, the paint away and it gives that white um, marks, white strokes, but also is uh, forming a very thin, fine, uh, dark lines around it. It's, it's a very nice effect. I'm going to take almost dry brush with some black wash and just make some throwing shadows here and there. Nothing too much. I feel like this painting is going to be great for a hallway or a, some kind of corridor. Somewhere it doesn't bother you, it doesn't require so much attention, but it's stayed there to break the monotonous of the wall. Uh, on the foreground, I'm going to do the same thing. Just some strokes here and there. Nothing too much. Fairly simple. Maybe put a little bit more black wash over there. I would really love to emphasize on the plants since this is our only kind of detail in our painting. Mm, that's gonna drag the focus of the viewer in the middle. Uh, it's gonna show this plants and the rest of it is just gonna support the, the horizon we create. Maybe a little bit on the foreground so we can have some kind of balanced composition. And there you go, watercolor, abstract, landscape.